What's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 24 of the PlayStation Drive. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Turford. I'm joined, as always, by the man, the mystery, the legend, Matt Sawinski. Matt, how are you doing on this lovely, lovely Thursday? Uh, I'm good, man. I'm excited. I'm uh, dressed up a stitch, so I'm happy. So if you're not watching the video, make sure you pop over and check it out. But uh, Halloween, Halloween's in the air, my friend. It's true. I mean, by the time uh, people listen to this, it will only be two days away from Halloween. And we don't actually... Actually, we have the RPG cave going up on Halloween. So technically, <laughs> we do have a Halloween show. But not this one. Perfect. Not this one. So close enough, of <laughs> course. This is the PlayStation Drive where we talk about PlayStation all the time, except for when it's Halloween, where we talk about other stuff. Um, of course, if you like what we do and you want to support the show, there's a number of ways to do that. Number one, you can subscribe to us on your podcast feed of choice. We're on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify. We're on all the things. So check us out on your podcast feed of choice. Also, you can subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Yumi Capri. We put up a video video version of the show every single uh, Friday morning. If you want to see our beautiful faces or Matt's, uh, you know, stitch outfit, you can go check us out you, there as well. Of course, like, subscribe, share all the things that you, people on YouTube tell you to do. Also, if you want early access to this and all of our shows, you can go over to Patreon, patreon.com slash you, me, Capri is how you do that. Leave a little tip in the old tip jar and uh, outcomes content. And then last but not least, Extra Life is coming up next week. It's finally happening, um, or at least game day is happening next weekend. So next weekend, Sean Capri will be live in Rome, New York uh, on, on the 6th of November, um, playing all kinds of games and stuff like that, raising money for uh, the Stollery Children's Foundation over in Alberta. I will also be streaming next Wednesday over on the You, Me, and Capri YouTube channel. So again, youtube.com slash You, Me, Capri. I'll be streaming RPGs all day long on Wednesday and Thursday, uh, helping raise money for sick kids. So you can check us out there. I've left uh, donation links in the description of the video or the podcast uh, show notes if you're listening on podcast feed. If you want to donate, um, you can definitely do that. I know Sean's got a ton of prizes as well. So if you're interested in also maybe, you know, giving money to a good cause and winning free free prizes you can head on over to sean's page um because he has more info about that there also matt i want to give you a special shout out because we <gasps> actually Me? met in person for the first time last weekend and uh we actually did a pro uh, an episode of the burnout writer podcast together um i've left mm -hmm. links for that in the show notes as well so uh but myself sean and matt all did a pr podcast in person in our hotel mm -hmm. room. And uh, you can check us out talking about uh, horror games as well as a bunch of other stuff. But also one of the things that we talked about in our conversation was that Matt should start streaming. And it turns out Matt started streaming last night. So mm -hmm. Matt, how, how did that experience go? What do you think? Uh, very awkward. I'm very in my head still, but you know, trying my best. I jumped in for another couple hours this morning and my plan is to hop along with you guys and help out with Extra Life a bit next week. So once I have the complete details, I will let you know, but my plan is to be streaming on November 2nd to kind of fill the gap between Sean and you just to kind of help support. So yeah, I'm trying my best. Going to be playing some Guardians, going to be playing a whole bunch of other stuff, probably cleaning up some cleaning up some Lost Judgment side quest too stuff. But uh, yeah, I'm happy I finally did it. I want to give a massive shout out to you and Sean for helping you, you know, give me that big old push. So yeah, yeah, let's see what happens. Dude, that's awesome. So yeah, if you want to check out uh, Matt streaming, uh, twitch.tv slash burnoutbrighter7 is where you go do that. I'm officially uh -huh. going to leave that in every show note going forward. So then people, know, the expectation is that Matt actually exists on Twitch and you can go watch him there as well. All right. Without further mm -hmm. ado, let's grab our eight tracks, pop them in. It is time for the playlist. And uh, because Fan Expo was this weekend, Matt, I don't think, mm -hmm. I know personally, I didn't get a, a chance to play a lot of games this week. Um, I played Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition on Switch while I was in the hotel room, but I didn't have any of my mm -hmm. PlayStation consoles with me. So for the most part, I was pretty much away from my PlayStation most of the week. So I don't really have a lot to say this week. So I'm going to throw it to you. So what did you play, yeah. my friend? Uh, I finished Lost Judgment. The back half of that game, at least for me, moves a lot faster than the front half. And that's specifically because they've tied a lot of the side content uh, you kind of have to unlock it in a way that there's like this like almost uh, like this radio scanning feature. So that can lead you to side quests. But they also have like a bunch of side quests tied behind this like secondary school story mode where like almost like Persona like you have to like get closer to students and then that'll unlock more side stuff as well. So um, I really, really loved the rest of the story. The pacing in the second half was fantastic. And I like how they kind of leave the side stuff there for you if you want to go to it. It's mm -hmm. by no means mandatory. Obviously, it'll help you get better. But the game is fantastic. The combat is so much fun the story was a wild ride i love how much 
Um, you know, they dealt with mental health in a lot of interesting ways. Not everything lands perfectly, but I think they do a, a good enough job that I I really, really loved it. It's obviously, it's way up there in my top five uh, for games of the year so far. But, uh, and then I've also hopped into Guardians of the Galaxy. Ooh, um, I've heard good things I, about I it. Picked, oh, yes. I'm so happy, Ryan. I'm so happy because when those reviews started to roll out and we were seeing like eights and some nines and like high sevens, I was like, all right, my expectations was a six to seven. Um, I'm about three-ish hours in so far and I would, like I'm loving it. The combat feels fantastic. It's responsive. It's quick, which is like I'm really, really stoked about. Um, you know, the whole I know some people had criticisms about it being pretty much like all shooting only combat, but like your distance actually makes a difference. The farther you are, the less damage you deal. You have to get in closer to the enemies if you want to hit harder. So like they do a lot of really cool things. The writing and the humor so far is on point. Like the guardians do not stop talking. Like when you're walking, when you're battling, they're they're constantly chattering. And like this could be annoying, mm-hmm. but so far I've heard no repeated lines. Everything has been very much like time and place and as to what's going on. The voice acting is fantastic. The writing is genuinely funny. Like I'm pleasantly surprised and pleasantly blown away with what the game is so far. Um, and like there's a couple times where it literally made me burst out laughing just because of how great it feels. Like these guardians really do feel like the halfway point between the comics guardians and the movie guardians in the best way. So like I read a bunch of the guardians comics before. So like, and the movie versions are, you know, they're ish, they're almost there, but like this feels a little bit closer to the comics. Um, already unlocked a bunch of extra costumes just by running around. Like everything about it so far, Ryan, I'm, I'm just so happy that this game is good so far. And I'm just, I'm so stoked to keep going with it. It's just, it's my favorite surprise of the year so far. And uh, this could end up being in my top five as well by the time I roll credits, but we'll see. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm actually, again, just looking at some of the reviews and stuff, I'm like, man, I probably should pick this up at some point. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited to definitely check this one out myself in the next couple of weeks because it sounds awesome. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm glad you're definitely checking it out. I've, I know you're probably the only person uh, as far as our contributors that are actually playing it. So um, I'm curious to hear how your experience uh, kind of unfolds over the next couple of weeks, because I'm sure you will yep. talk about it on the show for at least a little while going forward. Yeah, and I'll definitely have an extra mile done also when the, when I finish, because, you know, I obviously it's a Marvel property. And I'm going to talk about it for a little bit too long, but that'll be fun. <laughs> exactly. But that's just part of your charm, Matt. People love that. All right. Thank you. Let's slam the brakes on this conversation. It is time for some up, 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 up breaking news. And uh, Matt, I don't know if you knew this, but there was a state of play yesterday that people on the internet may or may not have liked. Um, we're going to go and just run down kind of the state of play. That's kind of kind of be our big kind of topic du jour for this episode of the show um, is there's a lot of stuff to go through here. So we'll talk about each thing individually, although there's a lot of stuff here where admittedly, I'm not going to have a lot to say on, but let's, let's get <laughs> into it. So let's start with death verse. Let it die. It kicked off the show. It's a multiplayer survival action game. that's coming sometime in spring 2021. It looks kind of like steampunky with some weird like weapons and stuff. And it almost, kind of looks like a battle royale game but i don't know if it actually is again it didn't use the battle royale term it just used survival action game which kind of describes what a battle royale is maybe just with less people but i don't know i this game just didn't really impress me matt what what do you what do you think about this I, well no uh no. i uh i got very much like hunters arena legends vibes from this but like yeah. steampunky like this almost feels like overwatch in terms of like the kit like this what looks like special characters and you know specific abilities tied to certain characters on top of like a battle royale MOBA-esque type thing. It's just like it seems like it's throwing a lot at the wall and just seeing what's gonna stick. Um and even just the look of the game didn't really impress me. I thought this was a a pretty weak way to start uh yeah. the state of play. I was I was not a big fan of this one. Yeah, same here. It was just like, all right, it's a game that exists. It's kind of to your point, it actually really reminded me a lot too of Hunters of Radio Legends in the same way, where it's like, cool. I don't know why this is here, but sure, mm-hmm. let's go with that. All right, next up, we got We Are OFK. It's a new five-episode music biopic series coming sometime in 2022. Um, this is being made by one of the co-creators of Hyper Like Drifter, um, so you can kind of tell at least a little bit kind of some of the influences from that game and kind of the art style. It looks... Interesting. Like, I think this is one of the more interesting games of the show for me personally, because I, I love, you know, rhythm games and, and games about music and just music in general. So I love the idea behind a game like this, especially because it's kind of unique. But Matt, I can tell you, you might have enjoyed this one, too, right? 
I loved this trailer. I've been hyped on We Are OFK since we've seen it. Like, we've seen it a couple times at these data plays or live shows. Um, and everything about the vibe from this game, again, just to go back to the writing of the trailer, how, like, meta it was talking about its own trailer in the state of play. If you guys haven't seen the trailer for this one, I really encourage you to go check it out. I still don't know exactly what this game is. And it being episodic uh, is, is a little... is, is hype, lowers my hype just a smidge just because I'd rather have the full experience at once. But this game is totally up my alley. I'm so excited to see more of it. And, like, I'm, I'm hyped. I, I can't wait. This was one of my standouts from the state of play. I, I'm really, really stoked on this game. Yeah. I'm excited to see what the game actually plays like more than anything. Um, mm -hmm. more, because... We did really get a lot of just cinematic stuff in the trailer. Um, so I'm curious to know what mm -hmm. else you're doing in the game besides, you know, you know, watching the cinematics play out. But yeah, same here. I actually really enjoyed uh, what they showed and I'm excited to see more. So next up, Bugsnax is getting free DLC called The Isle of Bugsnax. It's coming early at 2022. Um, I, I love the idea behind this because, again, a lot of people got Bugsnax for free thanks to PlayStation Plus, kind of when the PlayStation 5 came out. Um, I personally wasn't a huge fan of Bug Snacks. I thought it was just okay. Not an amazing game. Um, but I love the idea behind just having like a free expansion like this. Matt, what do you think about this announcement? Uh, I'm super stoked on this one. This was actually one of my standouts as well. Um, Bug Snacks has a very special place in my heart just because it was actually the first game we ever reviewed as an outlet. Um, so like that obviously biases me a little bit, but I actually really enjoyed it. It's one of the few Platinums that I actually got. Um, just because of how much I enjoyed it. I like the writing. I like the humor. And like as a Pokemon-esque monster catching thing, like I really enjoyed it for what it was, trying to figure out what it, what each, the best way to capture each monster. Um, so free DLC looks awesome. Like I don't really know what they're doing with it. They talked about that, you know, there's a new biome, there's more quests. So it looks like to be like actually a pretty meaty expansion-esque type thing. So, mm -hmm. and I mean, it's going to be free. We, like you said, well, a lot of people already got bug snacks. You have it, you're getting it for free. So I'm stoked on this. I'm actually really excited about this one. Yeah, and honestly, just like uh, we are all okay, I think this is one of the better announcements that we got from the showcase too, which mm -hmm. again, is going to tell you what we think about kind of the rest of the showcase as well. Uh, moving on, Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach is coming on to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 on December 16th. We've been seeing this game forever at State of Plays. It's been kind of around the block. I already can tell Matt's very excited about this. He loves horror games as it is, let alone Five Nights at Freddy's. Honestly, I don't care about Five Nights at Freddy's. A any of the games, they're fine. Even though I love horror games, like, I don't know, they've just never really done it for me. And Matt, I think you feel the same way. Yeah, this does nothing for me. Um, I don't know. I just don't. I also have a thing with like puppets and marionettes. They creep me out. Yeah. So for these kind of like robotic looking Chuck E. Cheese creatures just really even sells me on the game even less. I just, I know this is a huge miss for me. No, no, thank you. But they're supposed to be creepy. That's the whole point of the game, Matt. Like they're, no, they're no, trying to creep you out because people don't love the, uh, like get creeped out by those, you know, animatronic, you know, <laughs> robots. Yeah. So yeah, it's a game that exists, but it's a very popular <laughs> franchise. And I know that it's it's actually one of the gonna be one of the bigger games that were kind of announced here as well. All right. Mm -hmm. Next up, a game that's been on Xbox for a while that's finally making its way over to PlayStation is Death Door. Death Door arrives on PS4 and PS5 on November 23rd. If you actually pre-order the game, you get Titan Souls for free, because Titan Souls was actually like a Souls-like game developed by the same developer of Death Door, um, which again is is more of like a Legend of Zelda isometric game with like a lot of Dark Souls elements and is actually a pretty hard game if you've actually ever played it. So Matt, did you, I don't think you've played Death Door because you don't have an Xbox. So what do you think about the news that it's finally coming to PlayStation? I actually picked up Death Door on PC oh. um, earlier this summer and I spent a couple hours with it and I was really loving what I was playing and I just kind of fell off just because of how many things were around it. Like we were reviewing a lot at that point. Mm -hmm. um, so I fell off of it. So I'm actually really excited for this. There's a lot of people talking about like this is still possibly one of their games of the year. So there's a lot of hype and a lot of positive, you know, vibes around this game. So I'm super excited. Like I actually might double dip just because obviously I'd prefer to play it on PlayStation. Mm -hmm. um, and if, if I don't, I'm definitely going to be go back going back to it before... <laughs> Uh, you know, game of the year rolls around just because like there's a lot of good being kind of, you know, spread around this game. So I'm, I'm happy it's coming to PlayStation. I'm happy more people are going to get to experience it. And I'm very curious to jump back in myself. Yeah, I, I think that it's a game that a, a lot of people missed when it came out earlier this year, especially because, again, it was just on, you know, Xbox and PC. And now it's coming to the both PlayStation and Switch now. So it's going to be mm -hmm. on all the places now that people can play games. Um, and it's a game that I 
didn't ever try out because I don't really love Souls-like games. Um, and, and it kind of reminded me of um, another game called Tunic, uh, which is also coming to Xbox, um, which is a, a game in kind of the similar style, which I just didn't really jive with the, the combat in that game. And it's similar to the combat in this game. So um, I, I don't know if I'm going to check this one out, but I'm glad people are, more people are going to get a chance to play it because I think... That, that is just going to benefit the game so much more than it just being locked to one platform. So there mm-hmm. you go. That's that's awesome. Well news. said. Next up, Kart Rider Drift is a new kart game coming to PlayStation 4 with a beta sometime this December. It looks like a very adorable Mario Kart-esque looking game. Um, but I don't know. The, the trailer didn't really wow me. What, what do you think, Matt? So Kart Rider, I've actually played before. Uh, it's actually ridiculously massive in South Korea where, you know, I lived there for a it's a, it's a mobile game out there. So this is like kind of seemingly to be their first kind of transition over to consoles. Um, mm. I know a lot of people really, really love the mobile game for what it is. I know that it struggles a lot with its monetization. So like, I'm very curious to see what this actually is going to be. Cause as far as I know about the mobile game and from what I've played, the mechanics are actually quite good. It's bright. It's colorful. Um, so if this is going to be a free to play game jammed with microtransactions, it's probably a miss for me. But if this is actually like a genuine, you know, cart game that, you know, fully fleshed and not, you know, jammed to micro jammed with microtransactions. I'm actually curious to check this one out. Um, just because I know that there is a lot of love around this 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 mobile game. So I'm I'm curious to see what it's going how it's going to do on console. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Honestly, I, even though like the trailer didn't really impress me all that much, like I'm curious to try out the, the beta that's in December mm-hmm. and, and kind of give it a try and see if it's from me. Cause uh, um, th- this is just one of those things where like, I'm actually glad you're here Matt, to kind of provide that little bit of insight. Cause I didn't even realize that this was a mobile game in Korea that existed. So, uh, mm-hmm. it's, it's cool to maybe see something very popular coming to consoles and hopefully they do right by it. And hopefully it's, you know, again, d- doesn't have the same problems with like our transactions and I just hope it's fun. And especially because mm. we don't have, have a lot of good cart racers on PlayStation. So, um, having, having another one would be pretty awesome because I think really the only one that comes to mind is like crash uh team racing like that the port that they did um Mm -hmm. of of, uh the playstation one game um but other than that we don't really have like any other like good kart racing games on playstation 4 or playstation 5 especially after like we lost mob nation racers after the playstation era or little big planet uh karting and stuff like that so all right next up king of fighters is getting an open beta next month the full game will arrive on february 17th which is a date we already knew it was already on the spreadsheet, Matt. I, I didn't need to, you know, add it to the the the, the unique <laughs> spreadsheet that we've been tracking all of the games for for February. Um, so here's the thing with King of Fighters. And Matt, I know you had actually tagged me on Twitter thinking that I would be actually excited about this. But King of Fighters is actually one of my least favorite 2D fighting series. I've just never okay. I've just never really been able to get into it. I, I've, I've always felt that they kind of feel like a little bit, bit stiff and. I've just never really been a big fan of King of Fighters, despite the fact that I love fighting games. Um, but mm-hmm. I know that there's like a very like hardcore small audience that loves the King of Fighter games. So I know that this is going to be totally up their alley. But for me, I I mean, I'll, I'll definitely try this new version with the open beta coming next month. Um, but mm-hmm. beyond that, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Whereas uh, Matt, I know I don't think it did it much for you, but what do you think? Well, you know, Ryan, uh, now that I've, re-remembered that this game is, game is coming out in February. I'm going to be dropping everything to play it. Um, you know, I'm so hyped on this. No, I just, I don't know, fighting games for me, like unless they're kind of superhero skinned or pretty much like Mortal Kombat or Smash, I don't generally care that much. Uh, and this for me, like similarly, I've tried a few of them and I it just mechanically, I wasn't a massive fan. So eh, I'm glad for people who are excited about it, but just not for me. Yeah, exactly. All right, next up, First Class Trouble is a social deception game that is launching on PlayStation Plus next month. So it's going to be a day and date PlayStation Plus game. Uh, again, even though it's a PlayStation Plus day one game, I was just kind of meh on this trailer. I, I, I'm not super into this. Matt, what do you think about this one? Yeah, so this was actually part of a leak that we got for PlayStation Plus next month. Um and I actually did some digging into what this game is, and it's been on PC for a while in early access, and people generally have good things to say about it. The biggest thing, the biggest kind of criticism I saw levied against it was just because, like, it's fun for the first 10, 15, 20 hours, but once you kind of learn the mechanics, there isn't anything really new and exciting to kind of keep you locked on it. Mm-hmm. Um, it feels very Among Us, but PlayStation and, you know, you know, 
third person and 3D. So I'm curious to check it out. This game might be one that like I'll enjoy playing with friends, but outside of that, eh, whatever, it's fine. Yeah, it's it's fine. It's a game that exists. That's what I'm going to say about mm-hmm. it. Um, but I mean, it's on Plus, so I don't know. I'll try it out because it's free and everyone is going to have access to it. In fact, uh, the mm-hmm. League Plus games, we're going to talk about them on next week's show when they actually get formula announced to make sure that yep. there aren't any discrepancies. But it sounds like we're going to have a pretty good uh, lineup next month. All right, next up, and this one got me excited for a second until <laughs> I actually saw the trailer for it. Uh, Star Ocean, the Divine Force was announced. It is coming sometime in 2022. This is actually a, a new, brand new Star Ocean game my, made by the original developers over at TriAce. Um, Star Ocean is a series that I've always really had a soft spot for, despite that the quality in the Star Ocean games kind of being hit or miss with some of the games. Um, but they mostly like most of them usually get marooned on a planet in outer space. Cause they're all sci-fi themed and you're basically trying to find a way to escape the planet. And um, the last like, you know, five or 10 hour percent of the game is like in space, essentially doing other things. But for the most part, you usually lock to a specific planet. Um, this trailer though, I don't know if I love the art style they're going with in this game. Um, again, I love, I actually, again, like the, the art style in the previous games, but this one's, uh, okay, I guess. Um, but mm-hmm. I mean, if the game's fun, I-, I will definitely be there for it. Cause again, I like a lot of the previous star ocean games, but at least with this first trailer, it disappointed me at least a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, the main thing that this game needs to do is just be better than the last star ocean game, uh, star ocean integrity and faithlessness, which came out around the PS fours, launch window like it came out a couple months after the console came out and it was just it was just fine so as long as it can be better than that I, i'm just hoping that it can definitely do that whereas matt i saw you shaking your head you i don't think you were excited about this one right yeah i've never played a star ocean so i have no massive love for the series not for any particular reason uh i love rpg jrpg so i'm i'm on a huge wait and see with this one like you mentioned like if the game is fun i'm 100 percent in i love you know the wacky jrpg stories i've never played star ocean so i'm curious to try one out um but yeah graphically it just really didn't do much for me and i'm not a massive graphics person i don't genuinely care but like the character models and especially the main character just looked so like almost like 80s hair yeah. metal like ps2 era graphics like it just it just really didn't impress me with its first showing but given that i know that especially i think some of the ps2 star oceans correct me if i'm wrong yeah. ryan like they're quite beloved yeah so especially I'm, the I'm ps1 to try star ocean games like star ocean first departure and second departure on playstation one were mm-hmm. incredible games and then star ocean to the end of time on playstation 2 was also really good um and then they had a playstation 3 game star ocean uh the last hope uh, which was also pretty good too so it was really just um the the, the last one that they came up with which was just okay mm-hmm. so yeah so i don't know i'm 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 given the pedigree of the franchise i'm willing to give the graphics a bit of a pass if that makes sense like i'm curious to see what people are going to say about it as we get closer to this one's a this one's a wait and see for me yeah same here like as much as i'm excited about there being a new star ocean game i'm just waiting to hear more at this point and hopefully it's not terrible all right, and the last game that we saw was Little, Little Devil Inside. It got a new trailer. It is still coming sometime in 2022. We don't really know too much more about it, but we got more of a deep dive with it. Um, but it's a game that I know a lot of people were excited about when they first saw it. I'm just not one of those people. Like, it's, I don't think this is a game that really appeals to me personally, so I really don't have a lot to say about Little Devil Inside. But Matt, let's hear it. What, mm-hmm. what do you think? I'm stoked on this one. Uh, I love a good indie game, and like the vibe from this one... It's just, it's interesting if you watch the first trailer we got over a year ago compared to this trailer, because like tonally, they're very, they're, they're, they almost seem like two different games. Like the battle and the combat seems to be very like Monster Hunter-esque, very like in your face with some big creatures running around. But this is the kind of first real look that we got at the overworld. And it, I, I like the art style. I think it looks adorable. It almost looks like, you know, like a diorama that you're going to be moving around. Uh, I just think that, like, I wish we would have seen a little bit more of this section in the initial trailer just because I saw a lot of people really hyped about the game. And then once we saw this trailer, hype kind of lowered a bit just because, again, seems very different than the game we saw a year ago. I'm personally still excited. I like what they're doing with it. The, the, the like, I like that as you kind of move around, it kind of, like, zo- seemingly zooms in and kind of, you know, gives you a, a better look at whatever's happening. Um I'm, I'm excited about this one, and I'm curious to see more. The one thing that I will say that, um, you know, Darren, my co-host over on Burnout, actually pointed out is that the text is atrociously bad. Yep. And I didn't realize it, but, like, it's, like, light font on light background. So, like, accessibility-wise, they need to fix that or at least have different options for how the text is displayed because that is going to be awful to try and read. Um, so 
that definitely needs to be fixed. But as a whole, I'm genuinely curious to see more. This was, again, one of the ones that kind of stole the show for me. And I'm excited to see what else we get from it. Nice. Yeah. I, I, again, it's it's the type of game where I can tell that it's going to be fun. I just know mm-hmm. that it's not personally a game for me. But I, I'm glad that pe- so many yeah. people are actually excited about this one. And uh, I hope it's awesome. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see maybe more of it. And to your point, like, that's something I noticed in the trailer, too, with the text. It's just like... What are they doing with that? Like, I hope it's not like mm-hmm. what the text is going to look like in the full games, so, but I guess we'll find out in uh, sometime next year. So mm-hmm. that is all the games that we got in the state of play. So um, Matt, how angry are we at, at this? And, and by how angry, I mean, you know, the internet's kind of been all over the place. I saw like polls on, on Spawnway's YouTube channel, for example, where like 60% of people gave it an F. Um, I don't mm-hmm. think it's never necessarily that bad, but I'm curious to know what what do you think of the state of play overall? Do you think this is a good state of play, bad state of play? What do you think? For me, I think it was fine. Uh, you know, OFK, Bug Snacks, uh, Dust Door, and uh, Little Devil Inside were kind of like the highlights for me. So there was enough there to get me excited. I just don't know if we needed it. Yeah, it hasn't been that long since our last state of play, and especially how long PlayStation can go between these things, it kind of feels more like an unforced error. I don't think really any of this could, could you know couldn't have been satisfied with a trailer and a blog post. Mm-hmm. Nothing here is kind of like, oh my God, we needed the state of play to deliver this message. And that's one of the biggest things when it comes to state of play is just managing expectations. And they try to do that, but like it's a state of play. It's branded that way. People are going to get excited. At least with Nintendo, you have like direct mini to kind of gauge expectations or what to expect. Yeah. State of play, just they kind of have the general moniker. I thought it was okay. I, I enjoyed it for what it was. I'm not upset that it happened, but I do question whether we needed it. Uh, I don't know, Ryan. What, what do you think? I actually think this would have gone a lot better if they actually would have just done what Nintendo does and actually just labeled it as like an indie state of play and not set the mm-hmm. expectation because I think a lot of people were expecting, you know, anything from Sony, like updates on Horizon or Gran Turismo or any of the first party games that are coming out, which we didn't see mm-hmm. anything from first party here. Um, especially because we still don't have dates for the Uncharted uh, PC collection as well as some other stuff um, as well as like just bigger announcements. Like I think that state of play to your point sets a a set of expectations in place and I just don't think they met them with this, but I Mm -hmm. think they were going for a very different type of showcase here. Um, And I think maybe that it would have done them good to maybe label that a bit differently or set expectations accordingly, like especially because I think Microsoft actually also does a really good job of setting expectations for their conferences, because like Aaron Greenberg usually will take to Twitter or or someone else like Larry Herbert uh, will take to Twitter and talk. Um, usually after they've announced that uh, an event's coming up, saying here's the things that you can expect from this um, and mm-hmm. being very clear about the messaging here. Whereas th- this time around, I just don't think really PlayStation did that. They did um, mention in kind of the blog post for it originally that we were going to get updates on games we already knew about and then some some surprises from our third-party pub- like uh, publishers. But So we were maybe expecting some more stuff. But uh, yeah, I, I, I think it was okay yeah. as well. Like, I don't think it was terrible or anything like that. I don't I think it's like the the massive failure that I've seen a lot of people kind of say it was on Twitter, mm-hmm. but I also didn't think to your point, anything kind of blew the door off of it. And the fact that a new Ar- Star Ocean game got announced and I'm saying that again, as a big as a fan of the series, just tells you everything you need to know about uh, what we saw here. But I do think we did, did see some good games here. Uh, mm-hmm. it, it just, I, I think that there wasn't enough things to maybe appeal to, to everyone at the showcase. Yeah. So. Especially because like when they start talking about third party and stuff, people automatically jump to things like Final Fantasy. People have like a lot of different expectations if all you say is third party, right? Mm-hmm. Which they did to be to their credit, but like not the kind of third party that I think people were expecting. So I think you're right, Ryan. I think it was just eh. Yeah, and okay. especially like we were supposed to, we're, we're waiting for the reveal of the Spider-Man coming to the Avengers that's supposed to be still mm-hmm. coming out this year. Um, like, Very there's true. a lot of third party stuff that we know is still coming um that we didn't see looks of here so i'm actually kind of surprised mm-hmm. by that but all right true good point next news oh actually hold on i forgot to bring in todd oxtra i almost <laughs> zoomed by this topic without bringing in todd oxtra at toxtra who asked the question was it just me or was the state of play japanese developer heavy maybe that will satisfy people who have said they've abandoned japan uh Todd, I did actually see a lot of Japanese support here, to be honest. We had King of Fighters and Star Ocean, but beyond that, um, we didn't really have, like, many other Japanese-developed games here. But, Matt, am I crazy? What, what do you think about this no, question? No, I think you're spot on, actually. Like, I, I understand the idea of it, but, like, I mean, 
you know, King, uh, what's it called? Cart Rider is a Korean game. Stuff like Death Door and stuff is obviously coming from, you know, non-Japanese centric developers. So I think this was just kind of more an unforced error as a whole rather than them trying to kind of pander to a certain audience, in my opinion. Yeah. I don't know, Ryan. What do you Definitely. I don't think they were like to to kind of go against Todd's point here. I don't think they were trying to win over a Japanese audience with this. If any, like, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. The biggest game here that was the an announcement as far as uh, the, 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 the larger games here was with Star Ocean, which is a Japanese game. But beyond that, like, I don't think a lot of these games really up. Like, do, do we think like Little Devil Inside or Death's Door are going to be like huge hits in Japan? They might be, but they're probably. I don't think that the target demographic is actually Japan. I think it's actually you know West a Western audience. So mm-hmm. yeah, I I, I actually ha- would have to disagree with that with Todd's question here. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about Returnal, Matt, because it's time to return to Returnal. So Returnal got a new update, allowing players to finally, finally, finally suspend their game and their run so they can resume their cycle at a later time. They also included a new photo mode as well. Um, so if you want to take photos in the beautiful world that is Returnal, you can definitely do that. But this update is long overdue. Th- although for me personally, I think this might be a little too late for, for me to want to go back to Returnal. But I am glad that they fi- Housemark finally listened to the fans and actually added this update to the game to add this mm-hmm. feature that has been sorely missing since the game came out, especially because like you'd suspend your game on the PlayStation side, um, but then your console mm-hmm. might turn off or might get updated. Um, and then you would totally lose your really good run. Um, so I'm, I am, but I am glad that this is actually here. Matt, what do you think about this news? Uh, I'm super happy. This is finally happening. I loved Returnal when it came out. I played it and beat it back at the day, like back at the time. Um, and I'm happy this is finally happening, even just outside of difficulty and accessibility, because I know a lot of people were crying out because of that. You know, that people have kids, people have diff- a, a wealth of different problems that could end up with them losing a run. But like, especially at the beginning, the game crashed on me a few times mm-hmm. um, and like, or the PlayStation would update while I left it in rest mode and I would end up losing a run because of that. So I'm glad that this exists. I know a lot of people are also very much asking for a photo mode, so I'm glad it's there. I, I'm i kind of like, I think that this is the last time that they could have done it, that people might still jump in before Game of the Year consideration, just because I know a lot of people were hyping this game up, uh, especially when it came out. So I feel like I'm glad it was now. If I, I think if it had been any later, it really would have been too late. And like you said, for some people, it already is, which is fair because there's enough going on right now. Um, but I'm glad that this is here and I hope people you know, do jump back in because that game is fantastic. It's so much fun. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are going to probably be picking it up dr- uh, during Black Friday or other sales this fall, mm-hmm. uh, fall especially because I know a lot of more people are going to be jumping into PlayStation 5 this holiday season. So yeah, I think that this is the, the, perfect, like, the perfect time for that. Like if they would have waited till like, you know, next year would have been way too late for a lot of people. So, uh, I am February. Glad. Yeah. In February, of course, you know what you want to just jump in back into Returnal when horizon comes around. Also to your point, Matt, they, it actually did. I don't know if you saw this, but Returnal actually won a game of the year award last night. They actually, um, I can't remember the, the outlet, but they did a big awards show and Returnal actually ended up winning game of the year. Amazing. Night, uh, cause I saw the, the sack boy, uh, account actually tweeting about it, which I thought was really interesting. All right. Next on the docket, Apple Music has finally launched on PlayStation 5, so you can actually stream your music if you actually subscribe to Apple Music. It is the very first game console to actually support Apple Music at this point, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't, personally don't really use Apple Music. I use Spotify instead. Um, so I don't. I think this is pretty cool news for people that use Apple Music because I love being able to use Spotify on my PlayStation and listen to music that way. Um, and Matt, I know you actually also use Spotify a lot too because I always see you listening to music on Discord. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, what do you think about this news? I think it's cool. I think it's awesome that it's here for people that want to use it. I, like you said, I am a Spotify person. I'm not usually one for Apple products nor Apple Music. So I'm glad that it's here for people who are looking for it. I generally don't know how much I actually use Spotify on my PlayStation, mm-hmm. um, just personally. But uh, I'm glad it's here. I'm, I'm happy that it made its way over. Clearly, you don't play enough Final Fantasy 14 where you need some music while you're uh, while you're uh, running around the world and stuff like that. So there you go. I know. All right. <laughs> Next up. This is kind of continuing from a story we talked about last week. Grand Theft Auto, the trilogy, the definitive edition, that's a big title, uh, has been dated for November 11th because when we talked about it last week, that was when it was first announced, but we didn't know Mm -hmm. when it was coming out. Um, We are also getting Grand Theft Auto 3 in PlayStation Now on December 7th. Um, 
I know that uh, Game Pass is getting San Andreas day and date, and the reason we're actually not getting Grand Theft Auto 3 until December 7th, so, uh, because they only do update PlayStation Now games once a month. Um, so the game's coming out too late for them to update PlayStation Now in November, so they're mo- moving it to December. Um, and the collection, mm-hmm. we speculated about the price last week, Matt. It's full price. So it's $79.99 Canadian or $59.99 American. Uh, what do you think about this news? Also, did you get a chance to see some of the updated visuals? Because they released a new trailer for it, too. Yeah, I did. Um, I think graphically it actually looks okay. I think given how old some of these games are, I, I think kind of them taking this almost like more cartoony-esque style to it, um, I, th- I think works. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be picking this up day one, to be pretty honest. I don't know if I'm going to pick it up at all. This might be one of the ones that I just kind of wait on sale for. I mean, we, we talked a little bit about this when you guys were on Burnout, but like, I don't know how well a lot of these games are going to hold up as a whole. Um, I'm, I'm glad that they're here. and I'm glad for people who are really excited about it. That's dope. Um, but for me, there's so much going on kind of to, you know, towards the end of the year and so much just backlog catch up for game of the year that I don't know if this is going to be something I'm going to be picking up right away, if at all. I think it's cool, but I don't, I don't know if it's for me. Where are you at, Ryan? Yeah, I'm in a similar boat. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm excited that we are getting San Andreas first in Game Pass, like when, the, mm-hmm. when this collection comes out, because that'll give me a good indication as to how, like where the improvements were made to the game. Um, as far as the visuals, I know some people were complaining about them online and about how they're cartoony, but I think those were mostly people who hadn't played the original games because the original (laughs) games were very cartoony in nature. That was how they were Mm -hmm. stylized. They were not stylized to be like, to look just like real life photo realistic. Like they were meant to be like cartoonishy looks on real life in a lot of ways. So, um, that the cartoonish, cartoonish visuals don't really bug me or anything like that. It is kind of the mission design that I've always said is kind of outdated from escort mm-hmm. missions to, uh, missions where you're, you're again, piloting the toy helicopter or, um, d- doing all kinds of weird stuff in the game that just wouldn't fly in a modern game as far as mm-hmm. game design is concerned. So, um, I'm curious to know what they've cut, what kind of improvements they've made to some of the missions in the game. I know they did add a feature that they talked about this in kind of uh, the, the place in blog post about the, your ability to basically, uh, resume missions at any time. Um, once you've, once you're close to failing them, or if you know that you're going to fail, you can just go to the menu and just resume a mission, which I do think definitely helps, but it doesn't make some of the frustrating missions less frustrating. So mm-hmm. I am curious to, to know what, what tweaks they made. So I, I'm going to be taking the, the wait and see strategy of playing San Andreas on Xbox first and then making my decision as to whether or not to pick up the collection. And if I do pick it up, it'll probably be on PlayStation because I've always played the Grand Theft Auto games on PlayStation. So I actually do, do enjoy playing them there versus on Xbox. So um, I'll probably go down that route if, uh, if I decide to pick it up later. And then- That's a good call. Last news story this week comes to us from Bandai Namco. They have announced the next part in the Dark Pictures anthology called The Devil in Me. It is going to be the finale of season one, in quotations, um, because they're basically doing two seasons of the Dark Pictures anthology because Supermassive signed an eight-game deal with Bandai Namco, and this will be the fourth game. So as you can tell, it's a nice even split. The game will be out sometime next year. It'll probably be out in October because that's when all of the Dark Pictures anthology games have come out in, uh, it, so far. So unless it gets delayed, it'll also be an October game. Um, the story it seems going to be it seems to be pretty interesting. It centers around a serial killer who's creating a mechanized automaton from human body parts of the victims that he kills. And the trailer itself is actually like really interesting. It's definitely a lot different from the other Dark Pictures Anthology games because the the other three that we've gotten, Man of Adon, Little Hope, and House of Ashes are more like supernatural horror um, things, it, where, whether they're ghosts or like ancient monsters and stuff like that. Whereas this almost seems, it looks like it's going to be like a slasher film with like a, an evil robot that you're going to have to confront somehow in the story. Um, it looks kind of interesting. So I am actually pretty intrigued by this. Um, also, the it's worth noting as well that House of Ashes actually got a lot of review good reviews uh when it came out mm-hmm. i ended up actually picking it up after reading some of the reviews because it sounds awesome but i just haven't had a chance to play it yet so i'll be talking about that on next week's show um but i love horror games and i love super massive and i hope that this is awesome so uh matt i know you don't really love the spookies but any thoughts um i actually so i did play the first dark pictures anthology man and Medan, and i did enjoy it for what it was 
Um, I know I was kind of down on House of Ashes just because of how much we've seen it, but this almost seems to be getting almost like a death loop effect where as soon as it came out and people started playing it, people kind of forgot about how much we'd seen it. Um, I have heard some people talking about how fantastic it is and some people saying it's actually their best game yet, which is, you know, high, heavy praise. So I'm actually might end up picking it up as well. I'm, you know, I might wait for a sale and grab it. And the premise for uh, Devil and Me actually sounds really cool. Uh, I generally tend to go towards horror that is a little bit more grounded in reality as far as compared to the supernatural. So for me, this sounds more up my alley than perhaps what we've seen before. So I'm I'm, cu- I'm curious to see more. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's building a giant robot, Matt. I don't know how grounded, grounded in reality it is, but you're right. It is yeah. probably more grounded in reality than, you know, Men of a Dawn was where it's about ghosts on a ship, you know, mm-hmm. probably, probably <laughs> less grounded in reality than that. So yeah, I, either way, I'm looking forward to that. Like, I think it actually looks pretty impressive and I can't wait to play it next year. All right. Let's let some of our friends into the car with us. It is time for the carpool. Folks at home, if you'd like to have your question read on the carpool, there's a number of ways to do that. Number one, you can submit your question on Twitter at Yumi Capriz. We tweet out a question post every single Wednesday. Um, you can leave your question there and we'll answer it on the show. Or if you join our Discord, the Yumi Capri Discord, it is free to join. Link is in the show notes. Um, or if you're watching us on YouTube, you can leave a question in the comments of the video that you're watching and we'll answer it on next week's show. Just like Jedi Master Ren did, on Discord, he asked the question, and this is actually more of a more of a comment than a question, but I'm still gonna read it anyways. Matterford, Matterford, Matterford. What are we PlayStation owners to do knowing that the best-selling PlayStation 2 game is coming to Game Pass? Just kidding, guys. In all seriousness, I do find it interesting that Microsoft got San Andreas for their platform, but do you think that forced PlayStation to grab Grand Theft Auto 3 for PlayStation now as a response? So Jedi Master Ren, I actually don't think that that they got it from as a response, but I do think that Rockstar and Take Two have really started to see kind of the benefits of having their games on platforms like PlayStation Now or Game Pass. So I actually think what what how it probably shaked out is that they probably reached out to Sony and Microsoft and asked if they wanted to have one of their games on on Game Pass. And I actually think it was fitting for PlayStation to get Grand Theft Auto Three because Grand Theft Auto 3 was such an important game for the PlayStation 2 and how it really revolutionized, you know, games forever, essentially. And and it's a game that people look fondly on with the PlayStation 2, and it's actually probably the most popular of the three games that we're talking about. Even though San Andreas did sell more copies, I do think that the general general masses probably know Grand Theft Auto 3 a little bit more than that game, especially because many of them are, uh, that game is kind of tied to so many people's first experiences with that console. So I actually think that it's a move that makes a lot more sense than when Mm -hmm. you kind of think about it as far as which of these three games they would put on PlayStation now, because it's kind of the history. Like it's going to essentially come to PlayStation now 10 or sorry, 20 years after the game came out. So I think that's kind of a perfect fit. What do you, what do you think about this question though, Matt? I think you nailed it, Ryan. Um, I was, you know, that's pretty much all that I was going to say. I think it makes sense given the storied history that GTA 3 has on PlayStation. And I think this makes total sense. I also think it it is a little, you know, not surprising that Vice City is the only one that they're holding because I know a lot of people, that is one of their favorite Grand Theft Autos. And, yeah. you know, if you liked GTA 3, how they handled it or the San Andreas remaster, um, it's a pretty easy transition to hop over and pick up the whole trilogy because you want to play Vice City. Uh, so I, I think this makes perfect sense. I think you nailed it. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, it's it's kind of hard to believe that that game is almost 20 years old at this point. So, uh, yeah, I, th- I think that it's going to be a great addition to PlayStation now. We don't know how long it's going to stay there because, I mean, who knows? They didn't give an exact date on this one. And But Rockstar games also typically don't stay in either Game Pass or PlayStation now for very long. Like, even San Andreas, I don't think is going to be in Game Pass for more than six months probably. So... Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that, how that plays out. But anyways, we got to go Matt, but before we go, Matt plugs go. Yeah. So you can find me on Twitter at burnout underscore Matt or at YouTube at youtube.com slash burnout brighter. And now you can also catch me on twitch.tv slash burnout brighter seven. Very nice. My friend, as for me, you can find me on Twitter at Ryan Turford. You also find us on Twitter at you, me Capri's on YouTube at youtube.com slash you, me Capri and on podcast services around the globe. So for Matt Sawinski, I'm Ryan Turford. This has been episode 24 of the PlayStation Drive, and we're out.
The PlayStation Drive is fueled by patrons over at patreon.com slash Amy Capri. And I want to say thank you to each and every one of our patrons from the bottom of my heart, from your support across all of our content. And let's start by thanking our premium producers, Dallas Ford, Lee Navarro, the fearless leader of the Phoenix Overdrive Extra Life team, and Jonathan Brown over at youtube.com slash PM Entertainment. Our platinum producers, Robbie Bollaby Miller and Trucker Sloth. And our gold members, Argo, Brendan Myers, Dallas Robbins, Emily O'Kelly, Heather Boney, James Johnson, Joel Brooks, Jose Jimenez, Mac Time, Benji Kong, Marcus O'Neill, RJ Kern, Dano, Skinny Matt, Mr. and Mrs. Nasty Boots, Fuya Fuji, and Xavier Reyes. Thank you all for all of your support.